Um, thanks for, as I said, thanks for inviting me to be here. Just a little bit about myself. I am the Assistant Chief of the DA's Narcotics Unit. Um, I have been involved in the prosecution of narcotics cases for roughly 14 years of my 18-year career with the DA's office. Um, I am here, uh, as I understood it, it was to be a question and answer session. I hope to be able to answer whatever questions you may have. Um, just my own impressions on the issue of dispensaries and whether or not they should be allowed in the city of Chula Vista. I ask you first, why? Why would anybody want them here? Frankly, this all began, to give you a little bit of a history lesson, on, with Prop 215, which was passed back in 1996, which was very, very simple. It allowed patients who were properly qualified by a doctor or their caregivers who were properly qualified and demonstrated as being somebody who cared as a caregiver for a patient to either possess or cultivate marijuana. That's it. It didn't say anything about cooperatives. It didn't say anything about collectives. All it did was allow people who have what was billed to the public or what was put out in all the election information was seriously ill people. They, they alluded to AIDS patients. They alluded to people with glaucoma, cancer, serious medical conditions. And that's what all the advertising said. What it didn't tell you is on the back end of this whole thing is there's a little proviso that allows anybody who has symptoms or, or uh, conditions for which relief is, is, is demonstrably effective. So basically you have a loophole which allows a doctor to treat you for anything. Anyway, fast forward, the, the question is why do we have dispensaries now? For whatever reason, the people that drafted 215 forgot to include the distribution angle. So now they're, you're stuck with this situation where you either have to get up and cultivate your own marijuana or somehow get it. That's where these dispensaries come from. The problem with dispensaries, though, in my, in my humble opinion, in what I've seen in prosecuting these cases, and what I've seen in looking across the state, is they're generally not legal. They're sitting here telling you about how they're, they're non-profit, they do this, they follow the law. They don't. Generally, you have to ask these guys, why are they wanting to go into this business in the first place? Why are there now roughly 60 of them in the county of San Diego? Why would people want to do that? Money. That's the only reason they would be in this. Why? Why would they want to do this? I strongly I don't understand why you would want them. They're in the city of San Diego. If it's so important to people to, to be able to go and see a collective, a cooperative, whatever, get your get your, your marijuana at a retail establishment, the places already exist. I believe you if you talk to any police officer, they will tell you that they do become crime magnets. There is an awful lot of money that's, that's transacted or that passes through these places. I suspect that at some point someone's going to realize these are a problem. They're low-hanging fruit in terms of having marijuana that's going to be delivered on a regular basis. What's to say that someone's not going to sit there and watch for deliveries and recognize that at 10 o'clock every Thursday there's a huge duffel bag of marijuana going in? You don't think that's going to be a problem? You don't think the fact that this money that's coming out, in fact, ask them how much they're charging for this stuff. How much money is going to be going through these places? How much money is going to be on the back end of these places at the end of the day? What do you think that criminals are going to start to recognize in that respect and not target them? I recognize they're telling you that they're doing all these things to, to ensure that the, the, the customers and so forth are protected. I don't think it's enough. I don't think that the tax money that they're, that they're going to generate is going to be enough to, to pay for the police calls that are going to be increased. Is that going to be enough to, to pay for two or three more police officers here in Chula Vista? I don't know. Thank you.